Welcome to the Two Minute Treasures Tip Podcast. I'm your host, Cindy Michael with MoneyMinder, where we're hoping to make your life as a volunteer way easier. Hannah says, COVID has changed the way our group must operate now. How do we go about changing our bylaws to reflect this? That's a great question. I suspect many, many organizations are finding themselves in the same situation that you are, Hannah. Um, To better help our listeners, let me start with why you might want to change your bylaws. Then I'll tell you how to go about that. So first of all, it's a best practice to review your bylaws annually, no matter what. This is the best way to make sure that they still fit. For example, if your bylaws state that you need to meet in person to vote and you can only meet virtually because of COVID, they need to be amended. Some bylaws also state who can vote or who can attend meetings or who can hold an office. Um, They often address term limits, quorum requirements, uh, membership specifics, changes to your financial year, things like that. You may need to adjust these over time as your nonprofit grows and changes. So your bylaws are the first place you're going to go when a question comes up as to what your group is or isn't allowed to do. They are great to rely on because they are the rules. And so there's nothing emotional or personal about it. They just, they're the guiding document of your organization. So to change your bylaws, First, refer to your bylaws. (laughs) The process of making changes should be written in your bylaws. So check that first and see what you need to do internally. Next, check your state's laws regarding how to file your amendments. Your state secretary of state website will walk you through that. There's usually a nominal fee charged. For example, uh, here in Washington state where I am, there's a $30 filing fee. After these have been filed with the state, then you may need to submit them to the IRS as well if you're a tax-exempt organization. Um, In particular, if you're changing something like your accounting period. So if you do something like that, that also requires that you're going to need to fill out um, and file a Form 1128 with the IRS. That's pretty specific, though. I know there are a lot of hoops to jump through, but it's well worth it to maintain a highly functioning nonprofit. So look into it. That's it for today. Be sure to click the subscribe button to get new episodes automatically. And if you have a question, email it to me at info at moneyminder.com so I can address it down the road. My name is Cindy Michael, and this is your two minutes plus a little bit treasurer's tip for today.